Well, before you go into battle with something, <laughs> you better know a little bit about your opponent and why you're in the fight. See, when it comes to the mind, there is no greater opponent on the planet. So it's good to know and understand a few basic things about your brain. Number one is research says that we think somewhere between 12,000 and 50 or 60,000 thoughts a day. Of that thinking, 80% is negative. 90% is repetitive. So that already tells you that there is a predisposition in the brain for you to be focused on the problem, the danger, the fear, the uncertainty, the insecurity. Then, based upon this research, you're going to be in that survival mode 80% of the time. Even if it doesn't look like it on the outside, you know what's happening inside. You know the degree to which you're thinking in terms of worry, doubt, and fear, opposition, othering, war, resentment, disdain, disrespect, all of those characteristics boil down to survival. Because the only reason I could be afraid of you is because there is something in me that feels at risk. The only reason I need to be in competition with you is because there's something in me that feels like I'm going to lose. And if I lose, then that speaks to my identity or that speaks to my ability to survive as I see myself. So if you're going to go to war with the opponent in your life that is keeping you from doing and having and being who you want to be, it's not out there, it's in here. And so the best strategy is going to be for you to understand the internal behavior that meets that surviving behavior and can neutralize it or can override it or circumvent it. That's why we talk about the surviving self the thriving self and the infinite self. Now the thriving self is so incredibly powerful and we all walk with that power and yet it is rarely called out for what it is because that power lives in words like hope and enthusiasm and possibility and courage and openness and intention and vision and all of those words for a lot of people sound nice but they don't believe that they are powerful but those words are powerful enough to change culture don't underestimate the characteristics of the thriving self See, because the thriving self, which is actually aligned with the frontal cortex, gives you the ability to think beyond your circumstances, gives you the ability to envision more of what's possible, where the surviving self has you just trained and focused and in automatic fight, flight, or freeze. And when you're in fight, flight, or freeze, you can't think. You literally are focused on the danger and winning or being safe. But if you let the thriving self into your life, then you open yourself. You make more room for possibilities that you can't see, for ways of being that you can't even imagine right this moment. So a simple way of opening yourself to that greater possibility is to, in the midst of the habit of the surviving self, stop yourself and get curious. Okay, get curious. You can use these three phrases to help you move into a wider space. You're confronted with this, your heart is pumping. You need to experience or dare to envision something beyond this narrow emotional space. 
if you get curious, and you can do that with just saying, what's next? What's the next step I need to make or I need to take? What now? What's possible? You do that? And that question, that energy moves you into the frontal cortex area of your being. And now that curiosity is making room. And if you are standing in that curiosity, then you are also in communication with your subconscious, with the wisdom and the intelligence that lives right where you are, but that you can't see. And you can call that airy fairy if you want, but we all live in a much larger self. I call it the infinite self. And that larger self has the wisdom of ages in it. And if we can move out of survival through curiosity or hope or compassion or presence, we can access more of the answers that are right where we are. You never have to be at war with anything or anybody outside, no matter how much power it looks like they have. If you go inside and you play the game of moving beyond the surviving self, you don't just move beyond your own surviving self. You move beyond the surviving self that lives in others trying to maintain its identity in the name of power, control, fear, or whatever. If you're going to know your opponent, then that means you got to know yourself. you got to know that there's this range inside of you, surviving, thriving, infinite. And thriving in the infinite actually make up so much more of us. And yet, we are usually focused on the surviving self because it's so doggone compelling. But when you learn and understand its characteristics, then you can work with them more consciously. And that changes the game. Your fitness community, I invite you to stay, join, and learn to turn wellness concepts into action. Living life well takes practice, y'all. So simply click the subscribe button to practice together, grow this conversation, and change the world. I can't wait to read your comments and hear how your life changes for the better. Thank you for subscribing. Let's thrive.